We glorify your name. We bow down before you. our Father. Our Father. Father and our maker, the righteous redeemer, our faithful God, the one who keeps us, the one who never sleeps nor slumber, the lifter up of our heads, the lily of the valley, the bright and the morning star, the rose of Sharon, the lion and the lamb the consuming fire. We've come to magnify your name tonight. Receive our praise, receive our worship in the name of Jesus. As we appear before you in Zion tonight, we ask, O oh God, that every one of us in this auditorium will grow from strength to strength. We ask tonight that every one of us in this auditorium will begin to experience a transformational shift in our lives in the name of Jesus. Thank you, ancient of days, for in Jesus' mighty name we have given thanks. Can you join me and celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the Alpha and Omega? We can do better, celebrate Him. Amen. Also, I will want to celebrate our father in the Lord and our mother in the Lord. Daddy, I'm Mommy Gio. God bless you, sirs. God bless you, mommy. Also, want to celebrate all our fathers of faith in the house, the governing board, council, um, all our pastors, senior pastors. The grace of God upon your life will never run dry in the name of Jesus. I want to extend this appreciation also to all our pastors from the southeast region and especially region 47 all our regional youth pastors god bless you in the name of jesus exodus chapter 3 from verse 1 to 2 exodus chapter 3 from verse 1 to 2 now moses kept the flock of jethro his father-in-law the priest of midian and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. Verse 2. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Let's quickly go to verse 7 to 9. Verse 7 to 9. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and I've heard their cry by reason of their thirst, master, for I know their sorrows. And I'm come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land, and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites, and the Ethites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Evites, and the Jebusites. Verse 9, the last for now. Now behold, therefore, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me. And I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. One of the things I see from this scripture tonight is that whenever God wants to bring deliverance to his people, one of the things he does is to look for a man who has a rod in his hand. This shows us carefully the importance of a rod. So let's quickly look at what is a rod. My brothers who came before me had made several analyses, and I want to write on that also. That a rod in the Israelite culture was a natural symbol of authority as a tool used by the shepherd to correct and guide his flock. Point one about a rod is that a rod, as my brother who came first said, a rod is a symbol of authority. 
So when I saw this team, one of the things that came to my mind is that tonight God is about to hand over authority to someone. I don't care. It is possible that you may have lost the authority before. But by the reason of this team, you are regaining your authority in the name of Jesus. Point two. The rod grants you access to rulership. One thing I noticed when God was communicating to Moses in chapter 3 is that Moses was scared. And when he got to chapter 4 of that same Exodus, verse 1 to 2. Exodus chapter 4 from verse 1 to 2. And Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice. For they will say, The Lord hath not appeared unto thee. And the Lord said unto him, what is that in thy hand? And he said, a rod. One thing I observed here is that Moses who had the rod did not even realize he was holding a symbol of authority. So one of the things that God had to do was to bring his attention to the fact that he is about to hand over authority and rulership to him. So when God wants to grant a man access to rulership, one of the things he does is to give the man the realization that he has a rod in his hand. In Psalms chapter 110 from verse 1 to 2. Psalm 110 from verse 1 to 2. Psalm chapter 110 from verse 1 to 2. Verse 1 says, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand. Until I make thy enemies thy footstool. Verse 2. The Lord shall send thee the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thy enemies. There is someone tonight. You are not, we are too comfortable ruling outside our enemies. But tonight, God is saying, I am sending you a rod because you are going to start ruling in the midst of of your enemies your case is going to be like Psalm 23 verse 5 Psalm 23 verse 5 it says thou preparest a table before me in the presence not out of the presence of your enemies in the presence of your enemies you are ruling in their midst tonight in the name of Jesus Point number three, the rod is also meant for correction. Whenever you want to correct a child, of course, a chief. The rod is an effective tool for such. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 15. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 15. It says, foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. The rod of correction for a child of God does not kill him, but brings him to righteousness. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 24. Proverbs 13 and verse 24. Also tells us that he that spared his rod, hated his son, but he that loveth him, chasteneth him betimes. So when you love a child, one of the effective tools for correction is the rod. Number four, the rod brings comfort and protection. Psalms chapter 23 and verse 4. Psalms chapter 23 and verse 4. It says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. If you read Amplified Version, Amplified added protection to that comfort. There is somebody tonight, no matter the challenges you are currently going through, the rod of God is sending you comfort in the name of Jesus. I would always joke with my people over there in Anambra City, and I would tell them that so many believers are still scared of demons because they have not realized that they have a rod in their hands. I'll give you an example that the Holy Spirit gave me. A man with a rod that is running from a dog. 
a man with a rod running from a dog and suddenly the man realizes that i have a rod why am i running from a dog and the man stands and begin to show the dog the rod the next thing you observe is that the dog will begin to run the man was the one running but the moment he realizes he has a rod and start making use of it the dog will begin to run in reverse let's quickly practicalize something i don't know i'm sorry our fathers may not be able to stand up but if you are still strong i want you to stand up let's practicalize something in exodus chapter 4 from verse 1 to 2 verse 2 god was asking moses what is in your hands i'm going to ask you the question tonight i wait when i ask you what is in your hand your response will be a rod listen listen when i ask you what is in your hand your response will be a rod the next thing you begin to do as the action point is that you begin to wave the rod and as you begin to wave the rod your enemies will begin to run in the name of jesus are we ready are we ready what is in your hands no you are not saying it what is in your hands now begin to wave the rod as you wave the rod your enemies are running tonight in the name of jesus thank you very much have your seat <laughs> oh shakapana one thing is to have a rod and another thing is to discover that the rod you have is a rod connected with fire now when fire is attached to anything you know that this is serious business quickly when fire is attached to anything you know that this is serious business let's look at some attributes of fire number one fire consumes first kings chapter 18 from verse 29 to 39 first kings 18 29 to 39 it's about the prophet elijah and the prophet of Baal at mount Carmel. hi i read carefully and elijah told them to keep adding water hard wood add everything and it took him less than two minutes as our father said yesterday and he prayed and fire came down and consumed the burnt sacrifice burnt the wood burnt and licked up the water there is someone tonight the fire of god is consuming your enemies in the name of jesus hebrews chapter 12 verse 29 also says that our god is a consuming fire this means that god can begin to fight your battle and consume all your enemies number two fire brings instant judgment fire is a serious business first kings chapter 1 from verse 1 to 15 first kings chapter 1 from verse 1 to 15 this is about elijah and the armies of 50. they came if thou be a man of god come down he says okay if i'm a man of god let fire come down and consume me instant judgment it was not joking the second time it happened it came and it happened instant fire oh there is someone tonight the fire of god is bringing instant judgment to your enemies in the name of jesus number three fire causes separation fire causes separation second kings chapter 2 from verse 9 to 11. elijah was pleading with elisha elisha stop here let me proceed elisha said no i am following you elijah elijah said stop here he said no i am following you but when you read carefully the moment the fire of god and the chariot came it parted them asunder it was no longer elijah begging it was the fire of god parting them asunder there is somebody tonight whatsoever that has held you bound for long the fire of god is causing separation in the name of jesus four, number four fire purifies for a child of god fire purifies for a child of god you can read malachi chapter 3 from verse 2 to 3 malachi 3 2 to 3 it says i will sit as a purifier fire to purify you from every of your sin so when we now talk about the rod of fire i've given you four attributes of fire so when we talk about the rod of fire we are talking about remember i said the first one is that a rod is a symbol of authority so when we are talking about rod of fire we are talking about an authority that carries fire 
when we say rod of rod of fire we are talking about an authority that carries fire it means that when you speak your words carries fire you didn't hear me <laughs> when you speak your words carry fire i read carefully and the first time elijah was introduced in the bible i was shocked what kind of man is this in first kings chapter 17 verse 1 first Kings 17 verse 1 the first time he was introduced in the bible was for him to come and issue a decree that water rain will not fall in this land until i elijah calls for it who are you this is a man that knows that his words carry fire <laughs> if you read first kings chapter 18 from verse 7 to 8 first kings 18 from verse 7 to 8 obediah and herb made a split go this way i go this way obediah met elijah and said i perceive that you are elijah elijah said yes i am elijah go and tell ahab that elijah is here listen what elijah was saying is go and tell ahab that the man whose words carry authority is here there is somebody tonight when you appear you will boldly tell them that the man Femi, with authority is here <laughs> hallelujah a man can carry the authority or the symbol of authority and may not be fully respected the symbol of authority for a police officer is the uniform carrying the badge the police officer can still be disobeyed but the moment that police officer has the little element called a gun no matter the trailer no matter the vehicle it will stop from tonight as you receive the rod of fire your word will begin to carry fire every mountain standing in your way as you receive the rod of fire those mountains will begin to crumble in the name of jesus according to point number two that we said hebrews 12 29 we say that our god is a consuming fire so when we say rod of fire we mean the rod of god number three rod of fire can also mean an authority that brings instant judgment an authority that brings separation from anything that is not of god <laughs> when you carry the fire of god everywhere you go your words carry fire you didn't hear me your words carry fire when you sing you sing fire when you pray you pray fire when you utter a word fire comes out because you are now a man that carries a rod of fire let me conclude how to activate the rod of fire number one is that you must be born again you must be born again the rod of elijah in second Kings chapter 4 from verse 17 to 31 was not active in the hands of Gehazi because he had no relationship with God. His apostle before God was not right. And the Holy Spirit spoke a word to me. It is not just about the rod, but also about the man that is carrying the rod. If you carry the rod of fire and you are not born again, that fire can consume you. So when our Father in the Lord comes and calls for altar call do not hesitate if you love your life to run out and surrender your life to christ because for as many that have given their lives to christ tonight your words will begin to carry fire in the name of jesus i want us to rise up on our feet and make this prayer hold somebody and say, Father, 
from tonight let me be a carrier of the road of fire that when i speak i speak fire that when i pray i pray fire that when i sing i sing fire that when i tongues i tongues in fire lift your voice and begin to make that prayer man pray loco payana when i pray i pray fire when i tongues i tongues in fire when i sing i sing in fire shambra la potosiata remo boboya takaniata as you begin to communicate tonight your enemies are running because your words are carrying fire already so shall it be in jesus mighty name we are prayed father we thank you tonight thank you for your word our eyes have been opened to understand that we have the rod of authority already in the name of jesus our eyes have been opened that in the midst of our enemies we all will begin to rule in the name of jesus thank you our father let your name alone be glorified in jesus mighty name we prayed